What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Liturgio, and this is episode three of season seven of The Locker Room. This week, the San Francisco Giants are prepping for our match against uh, conference and division rivals San Jose Sharpedos and their coach, Tom. Now, Tom has been in the GBA for a long time, lots of seasons, both as a coach. He's also been an analyst for several seasons when he used to do the power rankings and actually probably quite a lot else. He used to govern a lot of other things behind the scenes also so he's been a a big name in the gba for a long time and while he didn't have the best season last season if you look back at his accolades from before that he was actually a pretty decent battler and uh, he's got a pretty good team uh, this time around also so we're gonna go over the team that i brought for him and talk a little bit about the mons that i think he's bringing for me and then we'll go straight into my team builder so uh, let's go over my draft yet again. We have the Tapu Fini, the Captain Salamence. Uh, Tapu Fini is Moana. Uh, the Salamence, who is Mad Mens. We have Fresh the Arcanine, Dumbledore the Conkledur, Kinkelder. I don't either one. Why not? Uh, the Robocrop the Ferrothorn, Genghis Gar the Gengar, Zong the Bronzong, Klisk X the Heliolisk, uh, Night's Watch the Umbreon. Uh, Eros Doddle, the Aerodactyl, and GLaDOS, the Gyarados. On the right, we see his 11 Mon. He has the Thunderous T, the Celesteela, the Porygon 2, Vaporeon, his captain, the Azelf, Nidoqueen, Zygarde Dog, Zygarde 10, Zydog, uh, Incineroar, Gardevoir, Hitmonlee, and Lorantis. So, uh, as I normally do, and I'll explain it again uh, for those who are new to the channel, right above me, my opponent's team, I this is not the order in which he drafted it. My team over there, uh, I have in the order that I drafted it. But his team, I have ordered based on tiers for how likely I think they are to be brought to the battle. Uh, so that doesn't mean the top six are exactly the six I think he's going to bring. It's in tiers. So tier one... Uh, I'm. I would be shocked if he didn't bring Thunderous T and Celesteela to this game. Not necessarily because they have the best matchup against my team, but because um, looking at his past games, what his track record of brings are, looking at uh, what he might think works well against my team, they seem like brings that are very likely. Celesteel is his first round pick, Thunderous T is his second round pick, they cover each other pretty well. Uh, Thunderous T is a very strong sweeper, has the potential to be running Scarf sets, uh, very powerful life orb sets, it can set up, it's got a lot of options there. Celesteela has uh, the ability to wall and beat teams if you're not prepared for it. So. Basically, going into this game, one thing I'm really looking at um, is in addition to my win cons, or what my lose cons are. So, the reason I put these two in a tier all their own at the very top there is because if I don't have a way to kill Celesteela in the mid or late game, I've lost. And if I don't have a way to outspeed Thunderous T, um, and I get towards the end game, and it has enough power based on whatever set it's bringing, to kill off the rest of my Mon, I also lose there. So um, that's often the case in Pokemon. If they still have a faster threat remaining at the end that can kill everything else, you sweep. That's that's how the game works in a lot of senses. So um, I have to keep an eye out for that. Uh, other Mons I need to be a little bit aware of potential for late game sweep are a Choice Banded Zydog, um, a Hyper Offensive Azelf, uh, Unburdened Hitmonlee, or maybe a Scarfed Reckless Hitmonlee or something like that, uh, or a Scarfed Gardevoir. Those are all potential Mons on his team that would make sense to be quick threats. Uh, fast threats uh, either behind a Scarf or through some support on the rest of his team, but those are the Mons to kind of look out for for late game shoot. So those are my lose cons, and so I need to- I built a team not only around setting up uh, a condition for which I have a win condition myself, but also to avoid my lose cons for this week. So that's sort of what I'm looking at. So going on to the second row here, you'll see the Porygon 2, the Vaporeon, and the Azelf. Now, this is why I'm saying it's based on tiers. 
I don't think it's necessarily the most likely thing in the world that he brings both Porygon 2 and Vaporeon. It really depends what he's going for this week. If he's going for a really defensive team, he will bring Celesteela, Porygon, and Vaporeon. And uh, that wouldn't surprise me necessarily. But if he's only going to bring one, I think Porygon 2 is more likely. It kind of covers a little bit more of everything than Vaporeon does. Vaporeon is pretty easy to get around... Uh, with several of my Mon. He would have to be scared that my Arcanine is offensive, that my Heliolisk is coming, that I have electric coverage on Gengar. Uh, lots of other things. I mean, even Tapu Fini has the chance to beat it if I'm running Taunt and Nature's Madness or uh, like anything like that. It could all really mean trouble for Vaporeon. That said, it's a pretty good switch into several other Mons, so it, it, you know, it could be that too. Uh, he might, who knows, he might opt to run it kind of offensive, maybe with a hidden power fire or something, if uh, if he's predicting Ferrothorn. There's lots of options there, but I think it's the less likely bring than the Porygon too. Azelf, um, even though it's not a wall, unlike the, the other two before it, I still think is on that second tier of bring because it's his captain. It has a very diverse move pool, and it can run a lot of different sets. So a lot of the time, just the uncertainty of having Azelf can be pretty good on a team. So and I think that's maybe why he brought it as a Z Crystal. Has lots of different options there. So that's my prediction for the Azelf. Uh, looking onto tier three, this is not a low tier by any means. Remember, we got to hit six, and I haven't even presented six options yet. So the thing about this tier is, I think it's his most likely offensive brings, and I do have these in a little bit of an order. So. Incineroar did incredibly well for him in his week one battle. Um, Zydog is a pretty fast threat. It outspeeds everything on my team except for the Aerodactyl, and it actually beats Aerodactyl thanks to 1000 arrows hitting flying types. Um, running a choice banded uh, fast Zydog set can be pretty effective. Uh, it's easy to switch into by several of my mons, but it can be a pretty strong late game option for him. So. Uh, I think it's a pretty decent bring, but Nidoqueen is just so powerful. It can run uh, support sets, defensive sets, physical or specially offensive sets through Sheer Force uh, and Life Orb, It's and it's got great coverage, amazing coverage that it can use to really put the hurt on so many different Mon, so I'm fairly confident that he brings it. Uh, and then the last tier, Gardevoir, I think is mainly outclassed by Azelf. The reason he would be bring Gardevoir is if he feels as though his matchup is weak to Salamence, and then he might bring it uh, in, in that scenario. But I don't feel like that's likely. If he brings Gardevoir, I'm gonna almost certainly immediately think that it's Scarfed. Uh, the Hitmonlee and the, Her and the Lorantis. Now here's the thing, they neither of them have great matchups against my team, however they are his Defogger and his Rapid Spinner respectively. I don't know the degree to which he's going to feel that Hazards are a threat against him. So I'm uncertain, they don't have great matchups against my team. Uh, I have several options for dealing with either of them pretty well. Hitmonlee is not really that fast. It can be Scarfed. It could run a very effective Scarf Reckless set, but Scarfed Rapid Spin uh, is something that can easily be taken advantage of. So he needs to be really careful with that. So, um, so that's his six. Let's go on to looking at the team I brought this week. This week we're bringing Zong, the um, Zong, the Bronzong, Dumbledore, the Conkelder. Moana the Tapu Fini, Genghis Gar the Gengar, Klisk X the Heliolisk, and GLaDOS. And uh, I'll now go through my sets with you really quick. Zong is running an Aka Berry, Levitate, Psyshock, Shadow Ball, Trick, and Stealth Rock set. Uh, with... Okay, so his IVs went randomly missing. I don't understand why Showdown does this. It's very bizarre, but it's running a specially bulky set with some special attack investment. Now, this set went through multiple iterations. I landed on the set I landed on because it's able to two-hit KO um, Azelf, uh, common lead Azelf sets, um, with Shadow Ball. Psy Shock allows it to beat both Lorantis and Hitmonlee in a 1v1, uh, so that's a decent switch in option there. With the Aka Berry, I can survive 
two flamethrowers from a modest sheer force life orb Nidoqueen, queen and can two hit ko back with psy shock uh and the trick is there to help me effectively take on the porygon 2. porygon 2 uh, might switch in here thinking i'm totally safe uh, I don't need to worry about anything that uh, Bronzong has to do, especially if he sees me switch moves or something like that, because Trick is a common way to neuter uh, support Pokemon like Porygon 2 by like tricking it a choice item. And originally, one of the original sets, I was going to do that. The reason I changed it is because Akaberry now lets me take on Azelf even if it's got Flamethrower. It lets me take on the Nidoqueen even if it's got Flamethrower. My team's not particularly weak to Ghost. Um, the thing on my team that is weak to Ghost is Gengar, but why would Azelf run Shadow Ball for that when it can run Psychic Stab for super effective also? So, uh, I don't foresee it running Shadow Ball, which would be one of its other ways to hit Bronzong super effectively. I see it running Flamethrower, because it would also, in his eyes, that would mean it hits, um the ferrothorn super effectively so this set can take on a lot of things that might switch in on bronzong hoping to gain momentum it does not get two hit ko'd by um thunderous t so it's a good switch into thunderous t and it can deal a lot of damage to the thunderous t in response so if the thunderous thinks oh i'll uh I'll take advantage of this passive bronzong and try and set up some uh, nasty plots He's going to have to watch out for getting hit by a Psy Shock. I only have a little bit of investment in Special Attack, but it's enough. It's all I need because Bronzong's not trying to Oko anybody here. I'm not running a fully offensive set. I'm a tank who can take out key threats who might switch into this thinking, easiest play of my life. Things that think that they're safe um, against me. And Azelf is one of those. Azelf is not going to appreciate and probably not going to predict that a Shadow Ball is coming its way. Uh, and it will get too KO'd by it unless it's running a very supportive set, which you often don't see from Azelf. So that is the goal of Bronzong this week. It's my Stealth Rocker. I really want Stealth Rocks up because they're going to help me deal with Thunderous T a lot. Um, and also, part of the reason I'm bringing Bronzong as my Rocker this week, as opposed to, say, Aerodactyl or um, Ferrothorn, is because the other two lose the Hitmonlee. Whereas Bronzong does not. Bronzong will kill Hitmonlee with a Psy Shock. So uh, that's going to be my Bronzong. Probably going to be my lead. Uh, unless I'm predicting an, a Scarfed Incineroar that might U-turn on me as a lead option. So uh, moving on, we have Dumbledore the Conkeldur. This is a very similar set to one that I brought in week one. Just changing up my coverage a little bit. So Assault Vest, Iron Fist with Drain Punch, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, and Mach Punch. Uh, other notable things that were being considered on the set um, were knockoff uh, as, a, as a potential way to remove some potentially dangerous items. But there's almost no reason to do that because Conkelder can one-shot so many members of his team. It's usually better to just go for uh, either the prediction or just go attack what's in front of me. Drain Punch handles uh, a decent number of his team. It's a safe move because... He doesn't, the only thing that quote unquote resists it is Thunderous T, who's not very strong defensively. Uh, and so I can really put on some hurt with it. Um, sorry, the Gardevoir also resists it. Um, Gardevoir is a, and uh, Azelf resists it. They're both, they're all decent-ish switch-ins here. However, none of them are particularly defensive. So none of them are going to take those hits very well. Uh, we have Ice Punch and Thunder Punch on there. Um, Thunder Punch will help me with Celesteela, and <laughs> pretty much, uh, well, I guess Vaporeon also, but Drain Punch is probably the better option against Vaporeon. Uh, they're all good options. Ice Punch, um, will Oko the, uh, Thunderous T. So, even if I'm against Celesteela, he predicts me to go for the Thunder Punch, he switches in the Thunderous T and catches that Thunder Punch with a Volt Absorb. I'm still not that scared of it. Um, I'm Assault Vest, so I can take hits from it really well, and I can Oko it with Ice Punch. Um, if I'm not predicting it to just Volt Switch out into something to take that hit instead, in which case I might go for a Drain Punch. Who knows? You never know the scenario. You got options there. Mock Punch is to put a little bit of hurt on something in case I need uh, that, that priority towards the end game. This is a great option to help me take out the Incineroar. And the priority is just uh, always 
always nice because the Porygon 2 probably outspeeds me also. So it's nice to nice to have that option just in case Stumbleder has worn down and I just want to get one last ditch attempt off. Uh, Drain Punch will do massive amounts of damage to the P2, so I'm feeling good against, uh, feeling good about the Kinkelder set. I think it'll put in a lot of work in the mid game here. Moana and Dumbledore this week make such an effective combination. It is crazy. If you look at his team, almost every single one of them are handled by one or the other. Moana can take hits so well from basically any of his late drafted mons, um, with the exception of Lorantis. That's pretty much the only one, but Dumbledore takes on Lorantis. So Moana can handle Hitmonlee, it can handle Gardevoir, it can handle dual stab and coverage moves from the Incineroar, it can handle Zydog incredibly well. It, uh, it's just, it's so good against his, against his physical threats. And um, it's also one of my primary ways to handle Celesteela this week. Not the only way I have, I obviously have prepared a lot for the Celesteela, not gonna lie, not excessively so. I think all my sets make a lot of sense. Tom Steam's very weak to um, Bolt Beam coverage, so uh, I had it on Dumbledore, for example, just because it's, it's, it's good options to have there. I'm running Moonblast, Surf, Nature's, Madness, and Taunt with Leftovers. I'm not running Defog this week. Um, my team's not particularly weak to Stealth Rocks, only GLaDOS is, uh, and I don't foresee GLaDOS switching in and out a lot. Um, Dumbledore takes less damage from rocks, Zom takes less damage from rocks. Uh, it's just, it's not something that's really on my radar, so he can set them up. Chip damage is chip damage, it can help a lot, but uh, I'm not worried about it enough to run Defog this week. So, Taunt helps me take on support set, defensive set Celesteela's, it helps me take on Vaporeon and uh, P2 potentially. P2 of course has the opportunity to come in and grab um, a, a stat boost if it's download and might threaten me with Thunderbolt. However, it still doesn't do that much even though I'm not specially defensive invested. And I could still always taunt it to remove its ability to hit recover and then nature's madness it if I need to. However, I do have better options against it, including the Bronzong. So that is what I've got going on there. The Gengar this week is kind of a fail safe for me. Gengar is a choice scarfed set, Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, Thunderbolt, and Destiny Bond. Uh, basically, Sludge Bomb is a great click here. Um, just for whatever reason against most things uh the exceptions being say the the nitto queen and uh it, and the celesteela and celesteela is why i'm packing thunderbolt um if i'm in a situation there i can get super effective damage off against it and then the destiny bond is kind of my fail safe he has lots of mons that could very effectively run scarfed sets um and gengar can outspeed a majority of the ones that are likely scarfed and guarantee a kill with Destiny Bond. So it is a fail safe. It would help me a lot in taking out Thunderous. Uh, if I can get that heads up matchup, get Thunderous in there, get a Destiny Bond off against it and have it kill me, uh, then I get to take it with me. So that would be really nice. I do have lots of options here for Thunderous. Again, it and Celesteela are the two mon that I, high, I predicted the most highly that he would bring. So uh, I have, I do have other options for it, but if I'm in that scenario and Gengar is up against Thunderous T and I have an opportunity to Destiny Bond it to bring it down with me, I'm going to take it because that is a huge threat that I'd really like out of the way for me. We also have uh, Klisk X this week. Klisk X is running an Expert Belt, Dry Skin, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Focus Blast, Hidden Power, Ice Set. Now, Klisk X outspeeds a non-scarfed Thunderous T. And Hidden Power Ice does massive damage to it. After Stealth Rock, it's an Oko, uh, I believe. I might need to run that calc real quick. I'm Actually, I think I probably have it here. Let's have a look, shall we? Yeah, not quite an Oko after one Stealth Rock, but enough damage that you severely neuter it and it could be cleaned up by anything, even a resisted Mach Punch. So, um, definitely, <laughs> definitely huge that it outspeeds unless it's Scarfed. Uh, I would... I actually kind of like it if it's scarfed because its loss of attack power uh, would be very helpful for my team. 
So that's why I have that there. The Focus Blast is a great option for dealing with the Porygon 2. It's a great option for... Yeah, the Porygon 2. Pretty much that's it. I don't really have a need for Focus Blast outside of that. It does hit the Incineroar super effectively, but I'd rather just Thunderbolt or Volt Switch it, to be perfectly honest. Thunderbolt Volt Switch, obviously, um, I'm not going to feel too scared. This is a really weird thing. I'm not going to feel scared to click Volt Switch on Klisk X, because even if he comes in with the Thunderous T, I'm still going to hit it with a, a Hidden Power Ice, and then I'm going to clean it up later. Like, I, I, that amount of extra damage on the Thunderous T is just so worth it. I almost want it to come in on me so that I can click uh, Hidden Power Ice on it. So, I'm going to be clicking Volt Switch quite a lot here. The only thing also that can uh, take a Volt Switch, you could also switch in Zydog, which again, Hidden Power Ice, super effective against. Uh, it could, of course, outspeed me and Thousand Arrows me, but... Uh, <laughs> probably going to do it anyway. And part of the reason for that is I have a very safe switch in uh, to that Zydog switch, and if he does choose to do that, and that is uh, GLaDOS. GLaDOS is running enough speed to outspeed a choice scarfed um, Nidoqueen set once I get to plus one. Uh, I'm running a Dragon Dance set this week, Waterfall, Earthquake, and Substitute. Waterfall and Earthquake do wonders against almost every member of his team. The only thing that is particularly... Uh, that handles those that coverage particularly well is... Um, and that I would like to have Ice Fang against. Actually, it's like nothing. <laughs> What did, I thought I had something here. So Ice Fang was originally on the set uh, for Zydog. I think for Zydog? <laughs> no, Lurantis. That's it. It was for Lurantis. Uh, without Ice Fang, I don't have anything for Lurantis. However, Lurantis can't really do much to GLaDOS. Lurantis has a miserable move pool. It's basically got... It's got a grass stab option and then three coverage moves. Really obvious basic ones. Grass, bug are not good combinations, but it does have leech life, so it does have that option. It has a fighting stab, which GLaDOS resists. Uh, not stab. Fighting coverage with GLaDOS resists. And uh, what else we got on Lorantis? Uh Poison, which uh, is not stab, and GLaDOS doesn't really worry about it. So it actually doesn't threaten GLaDOS. Like, it does very little damage to GLaDOS. However, Waterfall and Earthquake can't really take it out either, so um, it's probably not the best if it if the Rantus does come to stay in against it like that. Uh, but Genghis Gar is such a good switch in because, again, let's look at this coverage. Grass, resisted. Poison, resisted. Fighting, not very effective. Leaving its only way to deal any amount of damage to it being bug and I always struggle with remembering bug but I don't think I don't think bug does much against it either yeah bugs also resisted so uh, it really it has it has nothing for Gengar so I have a very safe switch into the Lorantis so I thought there's no reason for me to bring the ice coverage I want substitute part of the reason I want substitute is GLaDOS can set up on Celesteela um, once I know what the Celesteela set is, and I'm able to get in, I can put up the Substitute um, and prevent it from Leech Seeding me. And then once it's, I'm behind Sub, he's either going to have to choose to try and break the Sub, which he can't do uh, after an Intimidate with, uh, with Heavy Slam. If he's running an Automatize Special set, he can break the Sub, but all I need is one or two dragon dances, and then he's pretty much a goner. Uh, I mean, GLaDOS is pretty defensive. His his physical sets will be neutered by Intimidate. His special sets don't do enough to take on GLaDOS. I'm not going to be hitting it super effective, so I don't have to risk uh, hitting a weakness policy set, and it has no way of boosting its special attack outside of getting kills if it's beast boost, fully specially offensive. So I handle um, any of the Celesteela sets, I just don't want to take too much chip because I need to keep myself out of extreme speed range of the Zydog. And Zydog will go down to a plus one waterfall. Uh, in fact, almost everyone on his team 
starts dropping to GLaDOS once it gets to plus one. Uh, the things that don't are Porygon and uh, Vaporeon. Vaporeon I'll need to get to plus two in order to guarantee a two hit KO against it, but it can't really do anything to me outside of scalding me and hoping for a burn. That's pretty much it. So once I uh, kind of either get some chip on Vaporeon and Porygon or I neuter Porygon, if I find the right opportunity to get in, get behind a substitute, Oh, yeah, that's another thing. I can just set up a substitute on Vaporeon's face, and it won't be able to break it with Ice Beam or with Scald, and Vaporeon doesn't have any coverage uh, for scenarios like that. It, so, I'm pretty much home free. If I can get a couple of Dragon Dances up, GLaDOS can sweep this week. It has the potential to, but I don't want to rely on that being my win condition. I need to play this systematically. I need to remove threats. And you need to focus on not losing win cons. That's what I need to do because relying on a Dragon Dance Sweeper belies that I have to land in a situation where GLaDOS can definitely come in, safely get up to plus one without taking too much damage so that I'm not easily revengeable. Uh, that's kind of what I'm going for here, and that's going to be the game plan this week. And so uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you thought there was something else that I could have brought. Uh, other things that I had on my mind, I was considering Aerodactyl until I realized that almost every single Mon on his team has the ability to take it on. Specifically, very safe switch-ins to it. His walls uh, can take it on Thunderbolt on the P2, Scald on the Vaporeon. Both very safe switch-ins because you don't really have the power on Aerodactyl to take them on. And they can both hit it super effectively with uh, their stab or common coverage move. So not great in that regard. Loses to Celesteela, loses to Thunderous, though it does have the outspeed advantage. Um, but then again, so does Scarfing, another mon that can handle it as well. So didn't want to bring it for that. Didn't want to bring a suicide lead set because this is, I'm not really a hyper offense team and suicide leads like you can afford to lose the first mon if you guarantee rocks up because you're going to be putting pressure on, on, on offensively. And uh, I don't really have uh, a team this week to do that uh, it does and it wouldn't match up against a team if i tried to so I, I didn't see aerodactyl as an option night's watch is an option however uh i think the reason i didn't do it is mostly um it it sort of risks thunderous t uh getting set up against me while i can kill it in two hits with foul play it has the opportunity to potentially uh, dual dance with Nasty Plot and Agility against me if I do that. And I don't really want to allow that to happen, so... Uh, and if it was running, say, Thunderbolt Focus... I mean, like, it's it does have the potential to do something there, but I, I opted not to bring it this week because I thought every single other mom that I brought um, has more important roles. As I said before, Ferrothorn... There's too much potential for fire on this team. Too many things that can safely switch in against it. I don't think it's my best rocks option. It loses to things that on his team that try to remove rocks. And uh, Arcanine loses to too many members of his team, though it is an amazing answer for Celesteela. Um, it's just too many other things on the team that can switch in pretty safely against it and take it on. So that was the reason I didn't want to bring those guys this week. But if you guys uh, think of a set idea, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.